So just uh, that sound. Um, I will be uh, sharing this out afterwards. If you'd like to share it with any colleagues throughout your network, um, we'll also have it on our YouTube channel. So uh, look out for a follow-up email um, and you'll see this there. So with that, um, we'll go into the agenda. I will be going over, do you still see my screen? Yes, cool. Um, I'll be going over Growing Greener uh, very briefly. I'll lead into a few circuit successes. Um, we'll go over the financial impact throughout Southeast Pennsylvania. Um, we'll cover some outcomes and then we'll have uh, a chunk of time towards the end for Q&A. Great, so uh, Growing Greener and Clean Streams. Um, growing Greener remains the largest single investment of state funds in Pennsylvania's history to address Pennsylvania's critical environmental concerns of uh, today. Growing Greener has helped farmland preservation projects statewide, protect and protection of open space estimates, um, oh, sorry, eliminates the maintenance backlog in state parks and restores our watersheds. It provides funds for recreational trails and local parks. Um, it helps communities address land use and provides new and, up and upgraded water and sewer systems. Um, the use of American Rescue Plan funds, otherwise known as ARP, um, for a Growing Greener 3 constituted an investment in capital projects that can be implemented now for nature-based solutions that prevent flooding and erosion to the rehabilitation of parks and trails and the protection of wildlife habitats that make up a large portion of the Commonwealth's tourism and outdoor recreation economies. Uh, the funds are distributed among the state agencies, the Department of Agricultural to administer farmland preservation projects, the Department of Conservation and Natural Resources, otherwise known as DCNR, which you're likely familiar with there, for park, uh, for state park renovations and trail improvements, and the Pennsylvania Infrastructure Investments Authority, otherwise known as PennVest, for water and sewer system up, upgrades. Um, the mission of Growing Greener Coalition is to ensure the health, prosperity, and security of people everywhere in the Commonwealth by advancing for public investment in cost-effective nature-based solutions for safeguarding our drinking water, cleaning up our rivers and streams, and reducing floods, um, as well as conserving the lands necessary for protecting wildlife, sustaining farm economies, and supporting other community needs, um, and providing for outdoor recreation. And we'll lead into the circuit trails. So while we are fairly zoomed out to show you the regional network of trails, and their status at large, it's important to note that the circuit trails connect us to our waterways and green space throughout the greater Philadelphia area by way of safe routes for commuters to reach their destinations. While the circuit trails coalition is working hard to reach its short term goal of completing 500 miles by 2025, uh, it's important that our efforts go above and beyond to ensure that our state senators and representatives invest in projects that improve our waterways, conserve lands and create outdoor recreation opportunities for all in order to bring lasting improvements to our communities. So I just wanted to cover a, a couple cases where the Growing Greener has helped uh, uh, the circuit trails. So in 2015, uh, Growing Greener 2 grant allowed Lower Marion Township in Montgomery County to continue the development of the Kinwood Heritage Trail. Uh, the grant was awarded by the, uh, the Department of Conservation and Natural Resources, DCNR, and allocated money for the development of the trail along with trailhead improvements. And that photo that you're seeing there is um, over nearly 100 riders who were celebrating the Kimwood Heritage Trail, but also um, one of the local projects known as the Mainland Greenway. Oh, missing, here we go. Uh, next is happened recently, it was in April of this year. Um, a few of you may have been there. Um, DCNR recently joined a celebration to open the Fricks Lock Village Trailhead and a new four mile section of the Schuylkill River Trail in Chester, Chester County. This was the uh, final segment of the Schuylkill River Trail in Chester County. So a huge celebration and took a lot of effort from a lot of different partners. DCNR helped fund the project with a $376,000 grant from the Keystone Recreation Park and Conservation Fund. Uh, the Keystone Fund was established to fund projects that make lasting improvements in communities across the Commonwealth. Um, with that said, there's an unmet demand for increasing Keystone funds to meet the present demand. Um, Pennsylvania's parks, trails, and other outdoor recreational spaces all have pressing needs, of course. But a report by the Pennsylvania Parks and Forest Foundation identifies a billion dollars in deferred maintenance in our state parks and forests just to roughly capture that demand. So it's important to note that uh, as we continue to engage with our state senators, representatives, 
that we tell them that we want to see these investments to our green infrastructure all the way through. While there are many pressing issues to address across the Commonwealth, um, our environmental and sustainable transportation systems need increased levels of funding to reach the present demand. And so with that, I will hand it over to Brad. Yeah, thank you, Patrick. So uh, <clears throat> as a managing partner of the Growing Greener Coalition, you know, we oversee the different organizations and the, uh, the avenues in which we take to advocate for Growing Greener. Um, just to give a little bit of a backstory on Growing Greener. So Growing Greener was first enacted in 1999 under Governor Ridge, that was Growing Greener 1. Then in 2006, there was a revitalization of the program, uh, Growing Greener 2. And then now here over the last several years, there's been heavy advocacy work for what's been known as Growing Greener 3. Now, during this budget uh, season here in this legislative session, there were two bills specifically that were uh, advancing Growing Greener. It was House Bill 2020 from Representative Culver and Senate Bill 525 from Senator Gordner. Both of those bills were identical in nature, and they were both asking for 500 million from the American Rescue Plan dollars to be appropriated for the Growing Greener program. Now, this is a pretty exciting uh, session that we had because we have these residual ARPA funds. Now, unfortunately, they came about due to very unfortunate circumstances, but the state allocations that we got needed to be appropriated by 2024 and then spent by 2026. So this was a, a pretty prime season to be asking for these boosts in conservation funding as this you know, extra money needed to be spent. So we were asking for the $500 million from both pieces of those legislation and um, across the legislative session, we had immense bipartisan support. On the House bill alone, I know we had over 60 co-sponsors on the legislation and that was uh, brought about by a lot of the heavy advocacy work by the partners of We Can Serve PA and Future Sierra Club uh, conservation voters. So a very, very big joint effort. Now in the end, the two pieces of legislation did not make it through the actual legislative process, but in the, uh, the budget package, well, we were kind of taken aback with a little bit of a surprise as we were looking through. We didn't see anything labeled as growing greener. What ended up happening, the legislators uh, created a new program called the State Park and Outdoor Recreation Program. Now, this has the same undertones as growing greener. So, for all intent and purposes to this budget season, if you see something called the State Park and Outdoor Recreation Program, it's it's the same type of program. That was $100 million that was allocated to the DCNR um, for all things state parks, state forests, outdoor infrastructure, and uh, you know anything from new picnic tables and benches all the way up to dam projects, the trail projects, and other critical infrastructure projects that these uh, these agencies need to work on. And the way that was broken down, <clears throat> excuse me, in the legislation is that 75% was going to stay internal to DCNR for their projects. They have a $1.5 billion backlog that they're currently chipping away on their projects. And then the other 25% is going to be uh, distributed in for the form of grants that organizations like the Bicycle Coalition or other trail groups can apply for and tap into to work on a lot of their projects as well. Um, so that's the State Park and Outdoor Recreation Program side of things. I'm going to pass things over to Ezra to discuss a little bit of other funding that we got this year. In total, I mean, it was a historic amount. We got over $776 million, $776 million for the outdoors. So just a little bit here from Ezra on the Clean Streams Fund then. Thanks, Brad. <clears throat> so along with the Growing Greener uh, legislation, which we now call the State Parks and Outdoor Recreation Program, uh, there was some significant funding that was passed through uh, a cousin bill or a sister bill, if you will, called the Clean Streams Fund. This is something that uh, our, our colleagues in the uh, clean water advocacy world in Pennsylvania have been working on in tandem with the Growing Greener Coalition and the Growing Greener uh, legislation. Um, these bills uh, were set up. There's a House version and a Senate version that were identical. They were set up in uh, really the impetus was behind cleaning up the Chesapeake Bay watershed, but really agriculture, non point source uh, runoff cleanup throughout the entire Commonwealth is really what was being targeted by the Clean Streams Fund legislation. Uh, it was it was written and drafted by folks at Chesapeake Bay Foundation, Pennsylvania Farm Bureau, uh, Penn Future was a part of that Chesapeake Bay Commission, and a bunch of other folks at the intersection of watershed cleanup and agriculture. So it was pretty innovative. We don't see these uh, constituency groups working along uh, with each other too, too often in Harrisburg. So that was really good to see. We saw a diverse set of coalition partners and stakeholder groups working together, hunter and angler groups, your traditional environmental conservation groups, agriculture interests, and, and, and more. 
and it was really exciting to see uh, this all get done. The Clean Streams Fund legislation in the House, it was House Bill 1901 from Representative Jonathan Hershey uh, from uh, Mifflin and Juniata counties. He's on the Chesapeake Bay Commission. And the Senate version was a uh, Senate bill. Um, I don't have the number in front of me right now, but I apologize, I'll get that to you. But it's from Senate Senator, Brad, oh, do you have it in front of you? Yeah, yeah Senate Bill 832. 832. Thanks, Brad. And, and this, yeah, legislation, yeah. this legislation is really important because it, it, it also looked to spend money from the American Rescue Plan allocation that was sent to Pennsylvania on conservation efforts to the tune of $250 million. Uh, half of that money would be spent on creating a new program called the Ag Agriculture Conservation Assistance Program, or ACAP for short. And this is essentially a new agriculture cost share program for BMPs or best management practices to be implemented uh, for on our, on our land conservation, water quality conservation. Pennsylvania doesn't have anything like this yet. It's, it's the first of its kind. A bunch of the states around us have this program already, Maryland, Virginia, Delaware, uh, New Jersey. Uh, and so this is something we were looking to get done for quite some time and something that EPA Region 3 has been calling for uh, for quite some time to work on air agriculture and uh, uh, non-point uh, source pollution goals. Uh, as you might know, just the Chesapeake Basin, we need to clean up to the tune of, you know, about $500 million worth of practices annually. Uh, we have a gap of $324 million annually. So the money we did get this year in the budget goes a long way, but we still need to work on uh, fixing a funding gap uh, with a sustainable funding mechanism, something that would be a recurring revenue. And uh, that's just talking about the need to the Chesapeake when you add in the Lake Erie watershed, uh, the Ohio River uh, Basin in the western part of the state, the Delaware River Basin on the eastern part of the state, uh, the, need, the, the need for monies for conservation practices for watersheds and basins uh, goes, goes up quite a bit further. Uh, so we need to work on um, uh, the next step is, uh, you know, there's a good injection of money, but the next step is to try to find a recurring revenue stream uh, so we can support watershed cleanups across their entire commonwealth. Um, and, and along with the agriculture uh, conservation element to this bill, there's also new money for acid mine drainage cleanup, there's new money for uh, some parks and trails, there's new money for tree buffer plantings, uh, along with the Keystone Tree, tree Fund uh, that, was, that was stood up a couple years ago in a, in a previous uh, state budget, uh, so that money will get injected into the Keystone Tree Fund. Uh, so really exciting legislation. We're looking forward to getting some of these new programs that were stood up in the bill uh, implemented as soon as January 1 of next year. So most of these uh, programs are going to be worked on through Department of Conservation Natural Resources, uh, to a lesser extent DEP, but really more so to Department of Agriculture and the State Conservation Commission, which is currently held underneath uh, the State Conservation Commission. And a lot of these monies aren't going to be directed uh, coming from directly from the agencies. I know the agriculture element, for instance, is going to be contracted out to private landowners and, and farmers through the uh, county conservation districts. So I know the four co counties around Philadelphia, they each have their own county conservation district. In the city of Philadelphia, uh, the county conservation district is the Philadelphia Water Department. So there'll be grants that you can apply from those folks for, for BMP implementation. Uh, so we're really excited about that. Another thing I wanted to mention is just, we see it here on the, the financial impact slide, is the Keystone Fund, and, and Patrick mentioned that in a little bit ago. Uh, the Keystone uh, Recreation Parks and, and uh, Fund uh, is, is almost 30 years old. It, it was passed in 1993 in our state legislature in Harrisburg, uh, but it, it, it supports parks, trails, museums, zoos, libraries, all kinds of really important, great stuff. Um, and so it's a little bit different from growing greener in such that it supports uh, vastly different different things, but also some conservation elements too. Um, uh, the growing greener and environmental stewardship fund come from uh, come from these uh, these allocations. Keystone fund is funded through uh, a, a, a realty transfer tax that happens, and so the numbers were actually up. I think it was nine percent in the last the last year. So numbers are pretty strong for Keystone fund. Uh, so I just wanted to call attention to that and talk about what exactly that is. But again, 1993 is when that first passed in Pennsylvania, and we'll be celebrating 30 years of the Keystone Fund next year. And uh, they're, they're all really important for conservation work across the state, especially in the Southeast. And I'll just mention from time to time, not, not 
not this last year because we were flushed with cash in Harrisburg, but from time to time, the General Assembly will like to come and, and look at these funds and they'll like to try to raid these funds and, and, and divert and redirect these monies elsewhere. So uh, oftentimes the Growing Greener Coalition partners will have to activate and mobilize our members and supporters, uh, our, our colleague organizations, the nonprofit conservation movement and try to protect these and make sure our state legislators know how important really the Growing Greener Funds Keystone Fund, Environmental Stewardship Fund, how, how important they really are to all of our communities and what they mean for local economies. So just wanted to mention that that tension, that dynamic as well, so that hopefully, uh, you know, folks here can can work with your local legislators and just remind them what these funds mean for your uh, your projects in your part of Pennsylvania. So I'll stop there. Brad, back to you. Yeah, thank you, Ezra, for going over the Keystone Fund there. Like he said, as you can see, that's a pretty immense source of funding. This is a very broad uh, date timeline here from 95 to 2020 but there's been significant funding from the keystone fund to the region out there in southeast pa so uh moving forward here just a couple outcomes that we have you know like we mentioned we secured this once in a lifetime amount of dedicated funding for the outdoors between the uh, state parks and outdoor recreation program the clean streams fund um and then an additional 320 million uh allocation to the CFA, uh, PennVest, and a couple other organizations across the state. There's a, so much money right now that's gonna benefit the outdoors um, for conservation work, for water pollution, for infrastructure upgrades. It's really the full gamut of things that can be targeted here over the next couple of years with these programs. Um, additionally, we also raise a general awareness through our advocacy work of the importance of outdoor investments. It's not just going out and beautifying the state, that's a huge part of it, but the tourism economy it brings in so much money to the state that making sure that these outdoor infrastructure needs are met. Over the last couple of years, we've seen that, you know, through the COVID pandemic, that people have been getting outdoors and using these resources. So it's really fantastic that we have the money to upgrade and upkeep all of these. So moving forward, you know, Ezra just kind of talked about the dedicated funding for the Keystone Fund and how we want to make sure we're not drawing too much attention to things. We're we're collaborating as a coalition on what our next steps are. It's, it's great that we got this one-time funding, but it is one-time funding. So there are different avenues that we can take looking into dedicated sources of funding, move our advocacy work to that way. But at this point, we, we just don't really, we're not, we're not sure what the next steps are. And we have a meeting uh, next week on the 8th, an in-person coalition steering committee meeting. We're going to have these conversations. So hopefully by the end of next week, we have, you know, got ourselves grounded in a plan moving forward so we can continue to see this funding brought to the state. So with that, I will pass it back over to Patrick and I believe we're at the Q&A section. I was mistaken, here are some additional resources for you. So the Growing Greener Coalition website, I'm gonna pop it here in the chat for everybody. That's at the one-stop shop for all information Growing Greener. You can find the history on it. You can find updates on projects that are going on there's an interactive map you can actually isolate by county, by house district, by senate district, by congressional district to isolate the projects in the area. And you can actually pull that information off to a, uh, a spreadsheet so you can have it, you know, for quick reference. Um, there are the, uh, the category slash stories. That's other uh, stories of success with the program. And then there's just some contact info there, too. So please feel free to reach out to any of us if you have any additional questions about the program. We're more than happy to chat with you. And now I'll pass it back over to Patrick. <laughs> Thank you, Brad. Thank you, Ezra. Um, so we have a few minutes here at the end for any questions. Um, you can either drop them in the chat or you can just unmute yourself and, and reach out. Um, yeah. Um, hello, can I, um, can, can I just jump in? Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of new to this whole uh, the growing greener uh, organizations and everything like that. And um, I was reading up on the legislation and um, seeing that it was sponsored by Republicans. I know, I know you said it was very bipartisan, but one of my concerns is, is there so much, there's so much money and then there's so much positive energy. Um, how are you thinking of tying those two things together in a cohesive way so that the real needs, you know, which to me, is water maintenance that that all communities in Pennsylvania know where their water is coming from, who controls the water, and that we continue controlling the water, um, the cleanliness of water, like you talked about, um, 
Chesapeake. I mean, we're getting all this money, but you know, it's it's the industries that have polluted, and now we're, we we beg for money to for the the community to clean it. You know, I, I just feel like we're always behind the eight ball. Um, so, it, is there a vision there to 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 address what you know? I think the dire needs are uh, and the forthcoming needs for the future. I know it was like a lot of lash together. Yeah, actually, Ezra, I know you handle a lot more of water issues than uh, than we focus on here at We Conserve. So would you happen to have any kind of input on that? I know that uh, we're trying our best to make sure we're attacking everything all encompassing across the state to meet the needs of everybody. And uh, I know Penn Future handles a lot of water issues. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know where to start. There's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot to unpackage there. Uh, yeah, sorry, I, I'll sorry. say no, it's fine. It's a it's an incredibly difficult atmosphere to work in Harrisburg currently, given the current um, uh, makeup of the General Assembly and the divided government we find ourselves between the legislature and the governor being from different parties. And I'll say the folks that we work with in the legislature today, uh, you know, the parties and their ideology are starting to become further and further uh, apart from each other. So it's hard to find consensus. Uh, in order to get these wins this year in the state budget, we had to put together a, just a diverse set of coalition groups uh, to get the thing done and to make sure that we were talking about the agriculture and rural elements at the same time we were talking about the impacts in suburban Pennsylvania on, at the same time, the impacts on, on, on urban Pennsylvania. So we've had lots of meetings with delegations of city council folk from Philadelphia, uh, city council folk in Pittsburgh. We had legislative letters from the mayors of Erie, Scranton, Wilkesboro, uh, Lehigh Valley were involved, uh, county officials and municipal officials really trying to get everybody activated. Um, Pennsylvania is a very regional state. I don't know if folks had re recognized that. So we have to get buy-in from every single parts of the state to get something done in the General Assembly to build up that momentum. Now, moving forward, we still have a lot of work to do, like you had, uh, like you had alluded to. We're going to be relying a lot on our federal partners. As well. We need to make sure that we have uh, strong funding and support from the federal government. We need to make sure that our federal agencies that have oversight over water quality are, are, are strong and are not afraid of accountability and oversight. Uh, the last administration, unfortunately, uh, had shirked against accountability and oversight of, of the Department of Environmental Protection and other things that Pennsylvania was supposed to meet for service water quality and drinking water quality. Um, we're now seeing, we'll get, we'll get some more change there. Uh, EPA is watching really closely as to what happens in Pennsylvania. And uh, they've sent a couple letters already and they've wanted to see some progress there. So uh, we will continue to work on, on advocacy, on, not just on funding and, and the good stuff, but accountability too. Um, from the groups in our coalition that do that work. Um, and we're hopeful that Harrisburg eventually will have some more pro-environment legislators so that we can move forward more proactive legislation. Right now, we're really trying to thread the needle to get done what we can. And I think we have huge successes uh, with what we've been able to accomplish. Um, but I'm hopeful that we can do more proactive legislation down the road. So those are my best answers for now. I'm happy to take any other questions, maybe offline, or I'll include my email in the chat too. But um, I'll see if there are any other questions. Brad, there's a, there's a question, Chad, about Delk. I don't know if you want to take that one. Yeah, Barton, I saw your question there. So the best answer I can probably give for that is a lot of these funding programs are grant programs. So it's reliant on organizations being, one, aware that these programs exist, and two, being motivated to you know go through the rigmarole of a grant process. So if, if anything, that little amount of funding kind of highlights the need for organizations like We Can Serve PA and Penn Future and the Bicycle Coalition to be really trying to activate the grassroots and the grass crops to be aware of these programs and get people motivated and activated to apply for these grants for their projects. So I think the, the, the lower amount of funding may be a result of just a lack of an awareness, which is something that we can, you know, take, take to heart and focus on. Great, I know we're, we're at time. Are there any other thoughts? Questions? All right, it seems like we're good. Um, as mentioned before, uh, this was recorded. Um, if you'd like to share it without your net, throughout your networks, uh, please do um, look for an email from me. I will include uh, any information that was shared on the chat as well. And I, I appreciate you taking your time during your afternoon to join us and learn a little bit about what's going on in Southeast Pennsylvania. Thanks. 
Um, so with that, thank you and enjoy the rest of your day.